Yeah. Well, Carl, welcome to Sports Editor. Really grateful to have you on the show and talk about your interesting career. And man, it's a career of, of achievement and a lot of dedication because hearing about how many games you play and how much sleep you don't get, um, I really, really do appreciate your time. So, yeah. Carl, I'll start off with uh, the 17 for 86 against Somerset. Best bowling figures for Hampshire, from what I understand. How do you feel? Tell us about it. I mean, that is just what an occasion. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, basically the best best figures for Hampshire uh, from the club's 158 years old. So yeah. um, to hold hold something 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 like that is um, quite surreal, re- really. Yeah. Um, it took a while for it to sort of sink in, and once all the stats started to come out and um, and everything along those lines, and um, the first person in I think 50 years to take 17 wickets. Um, uh, I think. Oh, the other one that really sort of humbled me was I'm um, I'm the only one. I'm the only person alive on the planet that has got 17 wickets in a first class career. Everyone else has passed away, and I'm like, wow. Oh, okay. Like, it's just some of these things that started to come up from our our club historian, and that um, oh, just an incredible incredible couple of days. Um, I mean, not only not only getting those wickets and getting Hampshire into a win, um, the the state of the of division one at the time was so in the balance. Um, okay. People don't understand this whole promotion relegation here in four day cricket is so competitive. Um, mm-hmm. your, your eight teams in Div one, you're either fighting for prize money up at the top or you don't want to go down. And then the guys in Div two are trying to fight to get up. And the competitiveness mm-hmm. of four day cricket is incredible here. And I think it is the strongest competition across the world um, uh, when it comes to playing first class cricket because of that of um, just being so competitive. So just to kind of set the scene, um, Essex were, I think they were eight points or nine points ahead of Somerset. Um, we played Somerset. They were obviously in second. We were in fourth at the time. And Essex were about to play Somerset the following week um, at Taunton. And if they beat us, um, they basically just needed a draw against Essex that following week, which the forecast guys are spot on with forecasts here in the UK okay. because it does rain so much. They knew it was going to rain. It was the last week of September. It, it kind of already it was starting to unfold. Um, and then, yeah, so there was there was so much in the balance. We were looking to finish in third. There's a huge prize money difference between fourth and third. Um, so we had a lot to play for, and we actually wanted just to upset the apple cart. Also, to be quite honest, um, that was that was one of our main main objectives, especially with Somerset. We we've, we've built up quite a rivalry over the last couple of years. So yeah, there was, there was a lot going on. It and um, the messages were coming through from the Essex guys, and there was a, there was quite a lot happening at the time. Um, and Essex actually ended up because we beat Somerset, ended up winning the championship that year, <laughs> um, which is quite is quite amazing and. Um, but yeah, you know, it 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 was so hard to sort of explain how how that game went. Um, I mean, I remember every wicket like it was yesterday. Yeah. Um, but I think the nice thing for me personally with that was, um, I think I got eight. I got eight in the first innings. I can't remember you, which way. You, which way it was I can help you there. You had nine for forty in the first innings. Nine for forty in the first innings. Eight eight for forty six in the yes. in the second. Yeah. Um, two totally different skill sets and I think that's where myself over the last couple of, well not even the last couple of years since I started playing I've always been blessed with pace um, I've been blessed with I can bowl straight and that's what I've been trying to tell our youngsters here uh, at Hampshire you can I've made a career out of bowling straight and, yeah. and that's basically it um, it's not that difficult um, well I say it's not that difficult there's no there's no rocket science behind it and to how I've sort of gone about my trade um, and I think that was the nice thing for me. Like I've always thought, am I good in, in conditions that maybe aren't suiting me because I don't have pace and that? And it's always been a little question mark in my head. And um, the nice thing that innings really, or that game that, that really nailed it down for me was first innings nipped around. There's a lot of sea movements and, and that. And then on afternoon of day four, it started to reverse. And we got it swinging and reversing and just a totally different, set of skills um to to get eight wickets and um for me that was like one of the most pleasing parts where you, 
as a professional, you've always got that little bit of doubt in your mind. Maybe, are you sort of good enough or, or whatever? Um, and then when it actually comes to it and then you look back, you go, all right, uh, okay, uh, I shouldn't doubt myself too much in the future. <laughs> I'd say so. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> after you took nine for 40, you must have been just like super impressed and thought, okay, well, that's, you know, that's good. Um, did you ever think you'd get nine in the first sort of innings? I mean, you know, once you got your fifth wicket, you think, okay, hey, cool, great day. Mm. Let's add four more to that. Nine yeah. for 40. <laughs> It's just incredible. Uh, yeah. I, I, again, I say to people, like, um, the element of luck, I don't think we can overlook in, in that either. Um, from, I, I just ask questions. How did the other guys, it wasn't as though no one else was bowling from the other end. How did, how did someone not miss a straight one of someone else, a bad exactly. LP decision, um, something that we see on a weekly basis where, a silly dismissal, a chip to cover, um, a ball that hits a batsman on the far pad that's given out LBW. Why on that particular day uh, or those three days, none of that happened. And yeah, exactly. I, uh, and again, I just say, I say to people, I said, well, it probably only happens once in 160 years and it, hap- it just happened to be then and then. Um, mm. the so, uh, so like, yeah, you say taking nine there. Um, I always try to think of a process of, of trying to get a five wicket ball. You've got that new ball in your hand. If you can pick up two in your first spell, um, maybe even three, and then you should be able to get two of the tail out. Um, that's kind of how you're starting to set up a, bar, a five wicket ball. But it just seemed to escalate that day. Um, they nicked it. I hit pads. Decisions went my way. Catches were taken. Um, and then once once I sort of got the nine, I, coming out in the second inning, I thought, oh, I just want to get one just to get a ten for it. And, that's always that's always quite nice. Um, yeah, and I think they were only chasing about two hundred and forty or so, if I can remember. It was a quite a low scoring game. James Vince and Liam Dawson both got hundreds on it. I mean, it wasn't a great pitch, um, but they put us in a great position. And um, I think they were, I reckon they were sixty or seventy without loss, um, and ended up one hundred and forty all out. So we won, we won by nearly a hundred runs, and it, it happened so quickly. And it was actually a false shot. Um, was there overseas, uh, Muri Vijay from India, I think. He tried wow. to pull me He tried to pull me off quite a full length and it just went straight up and went on it. Um, and then I got their captain caught behind within the next couple of balls and then suddenly we just then, right. <laughs> that, that's it. We just felt like two massive players with quite a young middle order um, and we just happened to sort of run, run through them after that. So, no, brilliant. Yeah. Yeah, you know, because, really yeah, because I think in your, your second innings, um, there were six LBWs, so that reversing was happening proper. Um, but interesting to hear that you say ball straight. Um, could you give us a bit more detail? What do you exactly mean by, I mean, one thing is just going to run up the ball straight, but I'm sure you've got one or two little tricks that you add to it as well. Yeah, um, so that, that, that bowling straight came... Um, was it was I think Lance Cousin was still coach at the Dolphins, but it might have even been Graham Ford. Um, one particular winter, we had a small piece of carpet. I think it was I think it was actually Lance Cousin. Now that I think about it, really think about it. Obviously, the weather's so good in Durban during the winter, we can still have outdoor nets. Yeah, <laughs> we had a small piece of carpet um, that we sort of put on off stump, and three days a week we would bowl six or seven overs, just trying to hit this carpet, and someone would stand at the other end with a clipboard. And either go close hit or far miss one of okay. one of the three. And the first session we didn't know what we were doing. They were just like, "Yeah, try it that carpet," and then gave us the stats afterwards and going, "You guys are you guys are shit at this. <laughs> like, have have a look. You've only hit the carpet once out of thirty six balls. You haven't got close the other times." And I tell you what, by the end of that off season, if we weren't hitting that carpet sort of twenty to twenty five balls out of out of 36, 40 balls, we were pretty pissed off. Like. That, that that was the that was a competition between us and the hunger to actually to to bowl straight yeah. um, and that's what I, that's what I, I try and get across to bowlers youngsters at the moment is is telling them that that's all it is but if you haven't if you haven't done it and you haven't seen results in a game it's quite hard to buy into something and yeah. I was in the same yeah. position um, but as soon as I started to do it and then you you suddenly look up at the board and you you've bowled 15 overs and you've only gone for 20 and you haven't taken a wicket, you maybe then start to doubt it, but it all works out. Like, 
at, at some stage it does it does tick over and, or someone else is getting with it because you're building fresh in the water um so it it does work um it is the old cliche of top of all i mean it's it's the hardest ball to face in in four day cricket and i think i've just seen the results and i've bought into it and i've never allowed myself to ever doubt it yeah. um even this season i mean uh against gloucester i think i must have bowled 25 28 overs in the innings and i think i had two for 40 two for 50 hadn't gone anywhere only picked up two wickets and you're going right it will come it will come um and then two weeks later I've got 11 at Lords and seven at home and I've got 18 in two games <laughs> and you just go and literally in two games, I've doubled my wicket tally mm. from, from not even being <clears throat> in the top five to suddenly I'm second highest wicket taker in the country doing exactly the same thing and just sure. making, just being relentless in, in knowing that and backing that process because I've done it now for, oh, I don't know, I've played 120 odd, first class games over 12, 13 years, you you know that it is going to work. It's just a matter of time and and buying into that and just believing. And that's the hardest part. The hard part is actually believing that process. Yeah. Well, you evidence that believing is very necessary and that it does happen. So there we go. Any youngsters that are aspiring to be professional figures, there's evidence right here, right in front of us. So that's excellent, Carl. But quickly, last one. Um, on the whole 2019 innings, did you actually keep the scorecard from that game? Um, I don't have the scorecard. I do, uh, have, I do have the stump and obviously both the balls. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Have you put it in a so, good frame? Yeah. 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 So no, I've, I've, I've definitely got all those. They're pretty, pretty iconic. So yeah. Yeah. It's excellent. Excellent, Carl. Um, but Hampshire looking quite good at the moment. I think sitting second in your group. Happy with the performance thus far in, in the four-day competition? Yeah. Um, it's, it, it's amazing um, the, the small margin for errors in, in professional cricket or even professional sports. Um, we should probably be close to top leading this, leading this group that we're in by quite a bit. Um, but we've let ourselves down in two sessions, in two different games, okay. uh, where, we've been, where we've been bowled out in about 38... 36 overs on day one of a four day game. And you suddenly then are miles behind everything. And um, you start in T20 cricket and at T20 cricket now it can be a couple of balls and you can lose a game. It can be an over and you lose the game. Uh, 50 over cricket, there might be eight to 10 overs where you lose a game. But in four days, it's around about a session. If you, if, if you lose a session and you lose momentum in a four day game, it's one of the hardest things to get back in cricket um and it's also one of the easiest games to play when you have momentum because we we did the other way um when we batted first against middlesex uh scored 200 and 200 something i can't remember and bowled them out for 78 and suddenly we go back again and they are gone we've blown them out the water um and that once that momentum shift changes it's incredibly hard so happy where we are um we've got two big games coming up in july um because then after these group stages you kind of, they kind of merge, uh, two, right. two teams from each group merge into technically a division one. Um, they just changed it up a little bit this year, which I'm not too happy about, but, yeah. um, it is what it is. Um, so yeah, uh, we, we are, um, unfortunately over the eight games, we've let ourselves down in two sessions. Um, uh, other than that, we've had good wins. We've had good draws. Um, we were all over Leicestershire a couple of weeks ago. Um, but we had, bad weather i think we played 120 overs in four days um but even then we still managed to make them follow on in that by the time we batted we bowled them out for 80 or so and then um and then made them made them follow on so yeah we we are on a we're on a good space um but as i said we've got two two big games coming up in july so um i mean it's it's the purest form of the game it's the hardest form of the game and i love it i love the rewards of it um and even the hard work, I must admit, like <laughs> there's nothing more satisfying than taking off your shoes at the end or having a beer at the end of four days and going, no matter what happens, you feel like you've just been in a dogfight mentally and physically mm. um, for four days. Um, yeah. yeah. So Good stuff. Very rewarding, like I said. Mm. But Carl, like 
I don't know how you guys do it because it just it's competition after competition, game after game. Played something. I thought was it, you say eight four day games in in nine weeks, eight weeks. How yeah. on earth do you manage that? Uh, I think it's a, I think it's a mental game more than more than anything else. Um, I'm not a huge one to to do too much outside of cricket, uh, gym wise and 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 that sort of stuff. I, I play a lot of golf. I, I need to get away from um, away from cricket, especially in the, even in those three days that we got off in the week. We we're going so basically we were going Thursday to Sunday for for eight weeks out of out of nine, with Monday to to Wednesday off. Um, so switching off in between those games is key. Um, doing very little, um, even bowling during those times, and that's just if you need something, maybe tick over for two or three overs just to keep the action and in in tack there. But um, one thing I have found uh, across here in the UK, in particular, all the South Africans, especially the South African bowlers that have come here, have all pulled their weight. Um, okay. I'm not sure what it is about us um, coming from South Africa. The weather, just our our heart, or whatever it is, or um, our our fight for for positions and and being competitive. But I've found the most, if not all. Cycling bowlers that have come over here have, have done their work, and you just get into a you just get into a rhythm. And mm. um, I was I I love. I mean, he's not with us this year anymore, but I love playing with Fidel Edwards from um, the West Indies. He was okay. he was with us uh, 2017, 18, and 19 when I played for Hampshire, and um, he used to say as as the as the four day season went on, and even a four day game, he felt like he got fitter. Oh, and I never wow. quite understood that until, like, I actually started to think about it a bit more. And often I'd bowl in the first innings, and I'd actually feel better in the second innings. I was like, almost like training for a marathon. You're going to get stronger in what you do. Um, and I think that's what's been key for me is that the only way I can bowl longer, bowl harder, or whatever it is, is to keep bowling. Mm. Um, over the years, I mean, I've... <laughs> I mean, I'm a bit older now, but when I was a youngster and even during during lockdown last year where there were no facilities, I couldn't do anything, I thought, right, something else must, must work here to get me bowling fit. And as a youngster, I looked for shortcuts to get bowling fit, but the only way is to bowl. Um, and once you actually get in the rhythm of this county season and that, uh, a couple of days of rain here and there, a bit of bad light, you kind of, you, you kind of negotiate your way through it, um, but it, for me, probably the last the last two months is it's, it's a mental battle. It really is. Um, our bodies can take a lot more than you think, um, hmm. and um, yeah, it's it's more of a mental battle. Of pitching up on that Thursday, um, fingers crossed that you bat first and you can maybe have another day off. But if you've got to, <laughs> if you, if you've got to take the ball, you've got to do it. Um, at the end of the day, it's a job, and you're getting paid for it, and we've got to find a way. Um, and I think that's been. My biggest biggest thing, I just keep telling myself, is you just got to find a way to get through it. You got to, whatever it is, whatever works, you just got to find a way. Um, and and bluff, I bluff myself, lie to myself, countless times. Yeah, I feel. Anyone ask me, guys, laugh. How are you? I say I'm fine. I'm not fine. <laughs> of course, I'm not fine. <laughs> but you, you've got to, you, you have to some somehow. Get through it. Um, yeah. You know, on, on a day, if we bowl 20 overs, um, we've all got these Garmin watches, we'll do between 22 to 26 kilometers in, sure. in 90 overs. Um, wow. And then you've got to go back it up the next day. Um, sure. Yeah, we played a game against Gloucester this year. We fielded from Friday just off the lunchtime till Sunday night. We did 240 overs in the field. Oof. We fielded for two and a half days trying to bowl them out twice, trying to take 20 wickets. And wow. I mean, we were done. Yeah, I mean, I easier. We probably were done fifty kilometers over that weekend. <laughs> but yeah, um, that is something else. Yeah, you just you find a way, and you, mm. you rely on a bit of experience. Of you know what? I've been in a harder place. I've fielded in India for three days. Fielding in England for three days is okay. It's not as bad. Yeah, true. This like, is true. <laughs> you kind of yeah. Again, you bluff yourself. I'll, I'll bluff myself at least. So have you ever tried to have a word with the captain there? And although it might have been a better choice to bowl first, you try to say to him, come on, let's have a bat first here. Come on. So he, he, James Vince, he, he talks to me quite a bit. And 
he will always ask like what I think. And before I, before I answer you guys, I know I know you're a bad first person. Like, he always <laughs> you know, what do you think of the pitch? What do you think we should do? But I know you're a bad first person. Here we go. Like, why are you asking me? <laughs> Oh, well, you gotta you yeah. gotta be honest to a certain degree, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but now you guys are on to the T20 Blast. I think it's quite an exciting competition. How are you shaping for that one, uh, Carl? How are you feeling about that one? Um, so yeah, at the moment I'm actually taking a little bit of a of a break from cricket because of the, the loads I've done in the last couple of weeks. Mm. Um we've got so we're allowed to play two overseas players. Uh we've got Darcy Short here at the moment. And Colin de Granholm arrives after the World Series in about two weeks' time. So, um, and in that time, I think we only have six games until Colin comes and then both overseas are, can play. Um, but the club at the moment are, are emphasizing four-day cricket quite a bit. And with two very important games coming up in July, we just feel like it's a good opportunity to give me a rest here. Yeah. Um, I'll keep traveling with the team. Um, I did last night. I will over this weekend also when we go to Essex and, and Sussex just to stay around the guys. Um, I need need the energy. I need to stay stay mentally in, in cricket at some point uh, to an extent, um, although I will take a, a good week off from everything probably towards the end of July. Um, so, yeah, it is an exciting competition. Um, even more exciting around the corner is the new, the new 100. That's... that's New hundred ball competition that's that's starting in, in August. Okay. Um, so yeah, the the weather's good, crowds are back, T twenties back, and um, yeah, there's quite a nice buzz around the UK at the moment uh, with sports and with everything that's going on. Yeah, yeah. So Carl, if you don't mind, I want to sort of pick up on a couple of things that you mentioned there, mm. and you mentioned you know, South African bowlers work really hard in England, and you do. I mean, there's so many examples of guys doing really really well. <clears throat> Like yourself, like Dwayne Olafi is doing, doing very well as well. Um, and the crowds are back. But have you ever felt at times that maybe the crowds are not as supportive as what they should be, being the fact that you're South African playing in England? Do you almost feel like, hmm, why is this guy here? I know that. I know they yeah. probably appreciate what you've done. I mean, you've proven you're worth it, like we mentioned earlier. Is it, is it ever a bit of a cold shoulder at times? We don't, we don't really know. We just see you guys doing well overseas. We don't hear of any nonsense. But I don't know. Has it come across that at all? Or is it, are they very supportive? Definitely um, definitely when we, were, when we were registered here as Colpax. So technically we were locals. Um, now, obviously, that's fallen away because of the Brexit. We become overseas again. So... Um, they can only play two of us. Where Paul Pack could play as many of us as they as they uh, like. The team. Okay. Um, so yeah, um, there, there are a few few counter grounds around around where um, I've got quite a bit from the crowd. Um, oh, just telling me to go back home and that I'm not welcome here, all that sort wow. of stuff. But I mean, it could have been playing in Australia. Like I played, I played international cricket in Australia, and it can't get much harder than. Than that from crowd abuse, yeah, um, uh, but as you say, like, from a Hampshire point of view, the, the crowds at Hampshire have loved it. Um, uh, yeah, obviously, social media guys don't really—they're very quick to say we're keeping a, a youngster out. Um, if it doesn't go okay. well, why well, we've got so many cold packs and all that, all that sort of thing. Um, I think the biggest disappointment for most of us um, when you talk about a cold shoulder was where Brexit um, came in and we lost our Colpac status um, was, I'd say, the fight um, that we, not the fight, or there wasn't much, there wasn't, there wasn't anyone we felt that was sticking up for us here in ECB or in England cricket. Okay. Um, so that, that was quite, I'd say hurtful, but I'd say disappointing more than anything. Um, so basically, when we when we signed Colpac, um, we had to swear in front of a commissioner of oaths that if we revoked our Colpac, that they could actually um, take us to court for perjury. That's how serious it was that we coming across coming across here. And then overnight, wow. basically overnight, they could take our contracts away, and now we're overseas. Where guys have actually committed to English cricket, to committed to the country to try to come live here, um, make a home, uh, 
bring their families over. Kids are in school and that. And then we just we just felt that we were we were left treading water a little bit after from what we thought quite a big commitment from our side. Sure. Um, so yeah, I think that was the that was the the part that probably hurt a lot of us more. And um, I'll never sp- speak on behalf of all the Colpac players, but I've got a pretty good idea that we all all have the same um, same thoughts as what what I have uh, yeah. having just discussed it with guys. So um, that that's been that's been pretty tough. It's left it's left a few guys on on smaller contracts, guys with art contracts, and I'm not even talking South Africans. I mean. Uh, Fidel Edwards was a callback, and now he doesn't have a gig this year in the UK. Wow. Sure, so, sure, sure. yeah, it's it, it it's affected a lot of people, mm. um, and we just felt like there wasn't there wasn't much from from ECB or even uh, PCA, our players, our players rep, um, yeah, fighting our case. So uh, at the end of the day, I suppose we're still going to be lucky that we we have a job, um, um, but for the guys that or missing out financially and that it's it's tough it, it has been really tough yeah i can imagine sure carl that's that's interesting because you know we don't hear about that well i certainly haven't heard about that side of callback things um the guys just make a lot of noise yeah oh, we've lost our african cricketer and you always think well he's doing this for the right reasons because he's going to um, pursue a, a proper career overseas in the, in the best league in the world in my opinion and as you said as well so yeah that's that's interesting very interesting but there's things that have changed in South Africa and there's a new domestic season that's happening, new structure, tier one, tier two. Are you going to be playing for Borland or, or what's your arrangement, if I may ask, Carl? Yeah. Um, so as stands, I've signed a, a 50% contract with them. Okay. Um, I've been lucky to negotiate on my on my terms. Um, it, it That was a little bit of a deal breaker on, on my side. If I had to commit to 100%, I probably would have pulled out. Right. Um, from it all, um, I mean, this this runs all the way. Our competition runs all the way to the end of September, um, and as I said, we still this whole T Twenty campaign. We still got the fifty over fifty over campaign in here, and there's still six more um, four day games to play. So, especially as a bowler, it's tough. Um, and the negotiations I did have with a few franchises at home was, guys, I will I will play, um, but. October, November, December is my time. I said I need I need three months off. Um, Hampshire, it is my they are my number one at the moment. Um, they are my number one employer, and they have been since 2017. And I made that quite clear to everyone um, that I I won't I won't do anything if I feel like it's going to jeopardise mm. my fitness or my sharpness for Hampshire. And yeah, Borland were were kind enough to to agree with that. Um, so yeah, I'll join them probably from mid December in the new year and and play a majority or 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 however many games that are are left. Um, I know they got hardest for you in there. Uh, from the sound of it, that him and I will probably rotate quite a bit through those games um, to keep keep one of us fresh. But I mean, you never know once once it get once you get there. Um, but yeah, so I'm looking forward to it. Um, yeah. uh, as I said, when I played for the Titans at the beginning of this year. Um, I feel like I've got a lot to owe to Korea South Africa. Um, I always have said that they've they've part the way they've given me opportunities um, all over the place, and and it's opened up um, avenues here in the UK. I could never have played here if I if I hadn't played for South Africa. So, um, and looking around, they're lacking in in, a, in quite a few senior players around mm. the country at the moment. Mm. Uh, a few retirements, um, losing a guy like Robbie Fryling, for example. It's a big knock to to domestic cricket. Um, although Robbie hasn't played much international, he's been around for years at domestic yeah. level, and to to lose a figure of that like that in the change room is it's sad. Um, uh, so yeah, I feel like I, if anything, just to part some sort of knowledge um, into some of the youngsters coming up. So yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Um, and yeah, Paul's not a bad place in the country. No, I, I agree with you there. I say in Cape Town and not too far from Paul. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you, yeah good. You got your priorities right there, Carl. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, excellent. But you know, you mentioned about mental toughness, and I, you definitely are mentally very tough. And I've been talking about that quite a, it's come up quite a few times, and that's why cricket's such a beautiful game. But talk a bit about test cricket. And you took a liking against Australia, and I find this interesting. You took 16 wickets in three test matches 
and 31 in total in all formats ODI 2020s. I must have been a bit of a point that you made earlier where they must have heckled you a bit and you said, all right, I'll show you what I'm made of. Um, yeah, uh, I can, I, I, funny enough, I can probably remember all of those, all of those 16, I played the three test matches would have been Cape Town, Hobart and, and Adelaide against them. And even one day in T20, I played a lot. I seem to play yeah. a lot against Australia. Um, listen, at the end of the day, at the time, there were two, two of the best, best teams in the world, um, going head to head and, oh, you don't need any motivation, um, to, to get up and, and play against them and beat them. Um, I think that is probably the biggest, the biggest drawing, drawing factor to me. Um, it was more the, say more the crowds, um, than anything in, in Australia that sort of, that really got on your back. I'm, tr- I'm trying to think of any incidents. Uh, that the test match in Cape Town, uh, I was night watchman. I, I batted with AB for quite a while and, and they came, they came pretty hard at me for, for quite a while, but, um, I think I ended up batting oh, the night before and then almost to lunch the fifth day with AB. So it, it was quite a long time. And by the end of it, I think, um, I don't know if there was, I, I don't know if the Australians respect anyone, but I maybe hope that by the end of, of that, I got a little bit of the respect from them considering their bowling lineup and I, I fronted up against them. And I think that was it. I, I never, I maybe never showed it um, physically, verbally or anything, but in my head, I wasn't. I wasn't going to stand down to them. Um, I've never been like that. I've never been one to to get verbally involved. Um, now and then I do. Sometimes I, if someone's ir- irritating me, I'd like to, I will. Or if a batsman says something or does something, um, or or says actually, you know what really gets me going is is if if someone actually has a go at one of my other at one of my other mates. That's um, interesting. That, yeah, stuff to me. Uh, I can handle. I'll. I'll. I'll figure that out but um there's been a few few incidences in the county season where our batsmen have come in and gone this like it's just being an idiot and he won't stop he just won't stop going at me for no reason and i just think oh you know what to hell with this and then i go into quick info i have a look at their stats and if there's anything absolutely anything that i can pick on um that like that's it um i'm, I'm ready to, i'm ready to go because yeah you've got to have some, have some respect at, at some point you can't sure. just grab it from but um on a on a ninety percent of the time, ninety five percent of the time, I've always tried to just have a presence when I when I bowl. Um, I'm never standing down, even if I'm not. Again, I'll probably try and have more of a presence when I'm not feeling as confident with the ball. When you're going through a bit of a bad patch and you actually don't know where it's going, but you still need to try and have this front. Um, so yeah, I, I never got involved with the Aussies. I never said a word to them or. But in my head, there was no chance I was going to ever try to let them bully me in, yeah. in, 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 any, in any way. Um, <laughs> and I think that, along with just playing a test match for your country and, and fighting at that, really at the highest level of, of cricket in the world, um, obviously just just sort of made me tick a bit um, and just wanting to do well in, the, in, those, in those big games. Yeah, well, you're a tough nut to crack, Carl. You can see it. It's, it's awesome. A really good example of, of fighting through tough occasions. So, yeah, good stuff, Carl. Really, really great. Um, uh, just quickly going back a bit, are you going to be also playing in the, the T20 League in Sri Lanka? That's also gaining more m- momentum. Uh, I, did, I did last year. Um, right, I, was right. there, I was there with Jaffna Stallions in November, which we actually won the competition. Mm. Um, but this year, I think it takes place while I'm here. In the oh, okay. From what I understand. Okay. Um, right. So yeah, no, I haven't. I don't, I don't know much much about that. Mm. Yeah. Excellent. Well, Carl, I, I must say that it was quite interesting because when I when I got your number and I, I was about to call you on WhatsApp and I saw your WhatsApp status and it said, "Leave me alone, I'm fishing." I thought, "Oh my word." <laughs> <laughs> Do I do I phone him? Don't I phone him? What do I do? <laughs> but you're really accommodating. Um, maybe, that, maybe that's why the girls don't message me. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, you'll probably, probably find 101 other reasons also. <laughs> oh, God. That's interesting. But you obviously enjoy your fishing, don't you? Mm, I do. Um, I, I love, love wildlife. Um, mm. uh, I've been lucky enough we grew up on the north coast of, of Natal. I mean, really, in the, I mean, Empengeni, it's Empengeni Richards Bay. 
middle of nowhere, but um, uh, we holidayed in San Lucia. We actually got a house in San Lucia now where my, where my parents are retired. Um, so beach, bush, fishing, growing up mm. with the boats. Um, and now I live in Belito. Um, I'm right on the beach at Belito. Um, member of Belito Ski Boat Club. I've got a jet ski where I only need myself. I don't need any other help um, <laughs> to go out. So, yeah, um, and we're so lucky on our coast there. I mean, you 500 meters out to sea and you're catching Dorado, tuna, um, mm. wahoo. Uh, we really are lucky. And I, I love that. Um, I just love that that peace and quiet about it. Um, and, yeah, it, it's my happy place. It, it really is because I feel like I'm detached from, from anything. Um, and even if I don't catch, I just love being out there, similar to being in the bush. And yeah, actually, my jet ski's name in Zulu it's Jabulani, and that means happiness. Like, <laughs> it, it, like that's it. That right there mm. is is what I what I love. That's why I love to. I mean, come over here, work hard for six months, and just go home, and then just enjoy life while um, while just recuperating that. But yeah, love love it. Everything, uh, bush trips, camping. That's that's me on on the outside of Frigga. No, uh, excellent, Carl. That's good. Yeah, you've got to have an outlet. Very, very important. Yeah. But, yeah. but you said you do a, a bit of conservation work as well, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Um, so last year during lockdown, um, I got involved with Joe Peterson. Um, he played for Western Province and then he played for the Sharks also. Uh, he's got a non-profit organization called Nkombi Rhino. Um, and uh, through our coach here, or he's a South African, uh, Adrian Burrell, his cousin uh, got hold of me and are they all the conservationists sort of know each other. And, you know, we, we went out during lockdown and, and did some community feeding um, and that. And then as I got to know Joe better and better, um, uh, I started, he invited me on a few rhino dehornings as we went. And I think through lockdown, we did probably about 40 or so rhino dehornings. Um, through that lockdown period, which was pretty awesome. Um, and at the moment, I'm actually running, um, I'm actually running an auction here in the UK, an online auction um, yes, yes. Of, a, of a, yeah, a big piece of canvas of, of that 17th wicket, actually, um, against Somerset. So that, that's running all the way through the summer, and that's all, um, um, everything, I, everything I get from that is going to go straight to Nkombi uh, mm. for future projects um, with, with the warning and etc so yeah it, it's again it's a nice it's a nice relief from um uh from cricket uh, the way joe runs it uh, i love it he, he doesn't doesn't necessarily like the the attention and the publicity around it all he just wants his motto is let's go and go into the bush let's light a fire let's have some beers and then the next day we do some good work and and that's that's how he is um i think a lot of conservationists can get caught up in the in the limelight and um, want to be seen as heroes and he's, he's mm. not like that at all which I've really really enjoyed so yeah it, it's, it's been interesting it's been it, it's been um, educational definitely um, and yeah I never thought I'd I never thought I'd actually do anything like that so yeah it's been really good well again that's why I've got so much time and uh, wanted to know more about sports people because yeah I mean from even from a rugby perspective guys always giving back you giving back and uh, one big name as well is Kevin Peterson. He's also giving back conservation. So it's it's really great, Carl, to, to see what you're doing. It's, it's really, really awesome. And Carl, as we draw to an end, and I don't know if you've got a ticket for it, but India, New Zealand, who's winning it? First of all, I'm going to ask you a question. Is it a six-day test? Now, that is something to be interesting. I wouldn't be surprised me. I've heard rumours that it's a six-day test. I know it's once off. It's literally one test. That's literally one off because it's, it's it's here at our ground. We yes. can't get into our ground. It's India here. I've heard it's a six day test. I don't know if that's going to make any difference. Um, <laughs> I think I think if the weather's good, I think if if, if there's five or, or six days of sunshine, um, I think India will probably take that. Um, mm. They got good. They got good spinners. They got guys that can reverse the ball really well our ground can can get quite dry um if there's if there's some cloudy weather around i think those new zealand bowlers are are excellent in those conditions um and it's probably time for me to get off the fence here 
Uh, <laughs> but I would probably, my gut feeling would probably say um, India. Mm. Mm. No, I agree with you there, yeah, right? And I think they'll always be a uh, power to be considered purely because of numbers. Cricket's a religion there. They'll always do well. Um, mm. Let me have a quick look, huh? <laughs> yeah, let me have a quick look. I think, uh, I, heard, I think I heard it today. Let me see if I can find out for you. Someone, someone said to me it's a six-day test. I couldn't believe it. It's five-day. Is it a five-day? Mm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It doesn't make any difference. Um, yeah. I still think, I still think India, India or Edge. I just, yeah, I just think they got a better, their batting's a lot stronger. Yeah. But then, again, every time you play against New Zealand, they never look like much, but while wow, they pack a punch. They pack uh, a punch. They really everything do. Everything they do. For yeah. such a small place. Um, yeah. It's but incredible. I think what India have, and it's just, for me, this is the factor, is Virat Kohli. Occasions like that, it just, he just, I don't know what, he, he just absorbs that energy and gets even better. I don't know how he does it. And I think that's going to be the critical factor there. That's, yeah, it's, it's, it's an, purely it's because a, of him. Mm. It's an incredible skill. Um, and I yeah. think what you have to do is look, not, a, not a, even as a test record or anything like that, but his, his one-day record batting second, chasing and winning games for India. I don't think there's, there's not, not many harder situations in, in cricket. It's chasing down a 50-over score, especially in the subcontinent. Yeah. And he just seems to do it. Yeah. Um, absolutely. And I think you're absolutely right. He, thrives absolutely thrives on on pressure and, mm. and being that man and mm. yeah a huge a huge one sort of thing like this where there is going to be a lot of pressure uh, on both sides um it, it's it's certainly going to be something he's going to rise to yeah i'll tell you that's yeah i'm not gonna hopefully not going to miss it a day but let's see um <laughs> if everything works out carl you've been an absolute legend to chat to thank you so much it's been great your insight is incredible your approach to the game of cricket is fantastic thank you carl really really appreciate it I'm absolutely no problem thank you so much and mm. yeah thanks for being easy, easy on me with the questions ah man you're a good oak no problem <laughs> <laughs> have a good yeah. one man thanks Enjoy right your time. Cheers, man. Cheers, man. Bye, bye.